So hello everybody, this is the first video about chapter three. This chapter is dedicated to RSA, which is an asymmetric crypto system. And so before we start explaining how all this works, this first video is a little mathematical introduction to uh, a tool which is very, very useful and its core of RSA, and it's the totient function. The totient function actually uh, has been uh, discovered or set up by Euler, which is a very famous Swiss mathematician, and actually its name is phi of n, where n is an integer number. So first, let's have a definition of phi of n, this definition actually uh, is based on concept we've already seen in chapter one. And actually we have two ways of writing its definition. And actually we will see that the definition of phi of n uh, may help us calculate the value of phi of n, but actually it's not very efficient. So we'll find a way to calculate phi of n uh, from other statements. So nevertheless, phi of n is the number of elements of z over n z which have an inverse so have we've already seen before not all elements of z over nz have an inverse. And actually, if you remember, some a bar elements in z over nz as an inverse is equivalent to the GCD of A and N is equal to one. So actually we can also write a second definition of phi of N, which, which is straightforward from uh, the previous equivalence, where phi of N is the number which is named God for cardinal of a ranging from 0 to n minus 1, where the GCD of A and n is equal to 1. So it's a mathematical way of uh, translating the fact that phi of n is a number of elements of z over nz, which have an inverse. So the two definitions are equivalent. So if you want to go forward, let's take, for example, some value of n and try to use the definition to get the value of phi of n. So first example, n is equal to seven. What is the value of phi of n, which is phi of seven. So uh, we have the list of elements of z over seven z, which is zero bar, one bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five bar, and six bar. So perhaps you remember uh, the tables where uh, um, we have columns and in these columns, uh, the, uh, one column st uh, stating that an element has an inverse or not. So let's use this in another way. We know that the bar has no inverse, that 
one bar as an inverse, which is one bar. This is true for any value of n. Also, n minus one bar is always its own inverse. And for all the other elements, we must check if this element has an inverse using the GCD between the element and the value of n, which is 7. Here, actually, the GCD of 2 and 7 is 1. So 2 has an inverse. Actually, the value, uh, exact value of, of this inverse uh, is not of interest here because we just have to know if the element has an inverse or not, and not the precise value. Same thing for three, the GCD of three and seven is one, so three as an inverse. The GCD of four and seven is also one. The GCD of five and seven is also one. So all those elements have an inverse. So now to get the value of phi of seven, we just have to count the number of elements which have an inverse in Z over 7Z, that is apart from zero bar, all others have inverse, so there are six of them. So phi of seven is equal to six because six elements have an inverse in Z over 7Z. Okay, so the next example will be part of the next video.